All right, now that we're about wrapped up with the heat sheet heavy install, Greg's just cutting in the last row, which all has to get ripped. So it's kind of just a one at a time deal. I'm gonna come over here and start concentrating on where the manifold goes or the manifolds will be for the radiant tubes. Now, you may have been asking yourself why we're using this here versus the heat sheet. And that is because you'll notice the heat sheet with these knobs that stick up I don't have the luxury of just running my tubes anywhere I want. I kind of have to stay in these channels if I want it down at the bottom of the concrete, which I do recommend, by the way. So with the Subterra, I ran a couple sheets of that in this space. So when I come out of these, you know, there's going to be 32 different tubes, 16 supplies, 16 returns coming all into this area. I'll be able to just kind of mass run them out and then I can hit the heat sheet in a, in a, in a groove somewhere and take it to where I wanted it. So that's why I'm using the Subterra. What I've also done, nothing special here. I didn't go out, I meant to, I just ran out of time, buy some actual manifold supply organization so that this was nice and clean, but this is gonna suffice. I've got some one inch, basically it's conduit and 90s. So we're just gonna mount this on a board that is then gonna get secured with the concrete and then we can shove all of our tubes up. So I'll get all these labeled, I can get them all organized. I can know exactly which ones are for which manifolds because I have three different manifolds. I got three different zones. I've got the shop RV, I'm calling it RV storage over there. I've got the wood shop over here and then I've got my second story, which will be a later date. We will do all that piping later, but I've got to get the two manifolds in for the concrete that we're going to pour tomorrow. So that's what I'm working on here. Nothing special, but I think it's important to think about the organization and where all your pipes are going to go just to be as thorough as possible. You only get one chance. Anything in concrete, it's not going anywhere. Well, it shouldn't. Now, if you guys missed the laying of the heat sheet heavy from AMC, this white product you see behind me that satisfies my OCD to like another level. Make sure you guys go watch that video first. It might make more sense as to what we're doing here, but it's gonna be a big project getting this tube all laid before the end of the day, because tomorrow morning, probably 6.30, we're gonna have concrete trucks rolling in here to start pouring this floor. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. Let's get into it, huh? I'm trying to keep these as tight as possible because every other set will be another loop. So you'll have your supply and your return. It'll go out come right back in. I want to keep those tight because the first manifold is about this wide, but I've got to fit 16 different tubes. I'm only on nine, so it's going to be a little bit wider and it'll all go into this manifold. And then I've got a 12 banger over here that's going to have 12 loops all into one manifold. So I'll have two sections here and then I'll worry about the upstairs manifold at a later date. <laughs> <laughs> what if I went ahead of you like every, every Well, now? dude, I mean, I don't want you to have to bend over though. Greg, I'm going to let you run this one. You know, it goes to the 24 foot mark. Dude, I, this is going to go pretty easy the way this goes right in here. Although I feel like I need something. I need something to push that in down. I don't know what it is. Take I feel inch. like almost just freaking like you were laying it out. That's almost the way to go. Is that too tight of a bend there? I think that's too tight. We'll just do this. Yeah. So Dylan, this is gonna go to that post. Okay. Not the door post, but the post right behind you. Okay. Second post? Yep. Yep. And then back to the And then it's gonna come in only well it's gonna come in. I think this first this is one is inches. four. Was it four or is it eight? I think it's eight. Let me get my phone. I don't even know where I put my phone at. Back yeah. Came. Yeah, I think we go back then. Okay, and then that's gonna go down all the way to the end again, and then it will come back again eight feet. Maybe if we. Yep. Yeah. If the outside of this building doesn't heat well, we know it's because of that kink right there. When you got an engineered design, why would you not follow it? It probably is not as important as maybe just running it in what you feel like is the right thing. But since we went through all the work to get the engineered design, we're gonna follow it to a T 
And the cool thing about this is it gives me the printout for exactly what BTU, what heat, what temperature each one of these individual runs is supposed to get in order to be as perfect as possible. We're gonna follow everything to the T and I'm hoping to get my buddy Eric, Mechanical Hub, down here when this is all done in order to help me set up the boiler, the manifolds, and make sure it's all perfect because he's got a lot of knowledge. He, loves, he knows and understands all this stuff. We can follow the design and we can run this tubing by ourselves, I think. I just hope that one spot doesn't affect us. I don't know. We're gonna come down. We'll do in the same path to that door again, come back, but we see what we did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll come back at a one foot and then come all the way around at one foot. I think as long as I understand this, we'll, we'll need the stapler, but not yet. We'll just, we're just gonna kinda feed these to those pipes and then we'll make it all nice and neat when we have to run right, our, right, right. get our staples. That makes sense. So this says it's gotta go up an inch. No, it's gotta go up that high. Go down, you're not on it. I mean, that's 5 sixteenths. We out? We need to raise it? Dang, dude. Look at the veins. Up a half inch. Yeah. About 5 sixteenths. I think we gotta get under or around this module somehow, or nodule. Well, that's what I was wondering about that kink that we made over there. Should we, it don't matter, right? It's so hard for me not to overthink it. Even though I don't think I'm overthinking it. I think I'm just trying to be cautious to do it as good as possible. Because once this is in the concrete, you're not changing anything. There, that guy's just a little shorter than I would have wanted. Yeah. there. All right, let's run another one. Wait, it goes where? This goes, uh, you know, other way. Like that. Wow, this is easy, dude. Easy. Four, eight, twelve. Yeah, the spacings are four, see? So that's eight. Yep, no, this is right. So we go down, back, down, back to the thing. Okay, so this one kind of changes up the uh, the layout. We go back out and do the same thing, but then we got a couple weird loops. You know, Dylan, you're a very crucial part of this process <laughs> because if that's not straight, it makes it a lot harder. Right. Yeah. I'm just trying to help. So we go down basically almost 20 feet. So we only go to about almost where the drain is. Okay. Are those eight? See, yeah, those are eight foot. So we're just before the middle. Eight, 16, yeah, right here. Perfect. So this was all designed by uh, an engineer at Upanor. And Upanor is the, uh, this is all Upanor um, PEX specific for the underground use. It's not like hot water, cold water, you know, plumbing, whatever. It's a, uh, what do they call this? This is oxygen barrier so this is made for underground and they they did the design specific to here, let's try and cut this to be as efficient as possible so i'm assuming that design feature is available to anybody especially if you go through like an actual contractor that you know purchases through them but this will be a really awesome system when it's all done because it was designed specifically not only for the layout but i gave them details like what kind of insulation I'm gonna be doing, what I expect my lower door test to be, what I'm gonna heat it to, what the primary use is for. So there is kind of like a, a general use radiant system that you could do and probably just run these all 12 inches on center and you're gonna be fine because it's just gonna heat the slab up. But the goal here was to do it engineered and specific to be as efficient as possible, as comfortable as possible, instead of just running it and saying, ah, we're just gonna run it 12 inches, put a manifold in, and put hot water through it. So hopefully it actually does make a difference because you know it adds time, like any good thing, a little bit longer. But it's not really that hard. It's not that hard now. No. I think we've only got maybe one more in that area. 
Okay, so now we're in the red. So this actually should be the end of the doorway about. Does that look about right? We're gonna end up about the edge of the door on our, when we do a couple runs. Yeah. Okay, cross-eyed just looking. It's like, you know, those, uh, <laughs> those videos where it's like stare at this circle that's spinning around. Yeah. And they can wait, look up and it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> everything's spinning around you. Uh. Yep. This one, oh, this one's an interesting one. Now we kind of do the same sort of thing we did on the first one. It's gonna go all the way out around to this wall right here at four inches, come all the way back, then do like a half loop like we did the last one. And actually this is eight inches through here. See this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're eight okay. inches here in and out. Probably because it's so far away that they don't want the water getting cold being so far apart. So yes, one foot all the way over first. Hmm, can't really get there, so we're just gonna do this. Oh, dude, this is, this is so much easier actually, and it saves a person. There's no reason to be laying it out ahead, really. I think we could start doing multiple runs. Oh, now I gotta switch it up and go the other way. So just kind of walk and just get those down behind us. Yeah. Be perfect. I know you wanna make more money, right? All right then. He's got a girlfriend to support. <laughs> How does this look? Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I saw, I saw in the today. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't go live, dude. I couldn't go live. I, I told Kellen, I was like, he's probably so stressed out? Yeah, he's probably out. <laughs> <laughs> Not freaking out, but yeah, a little stressed, maybe. Maybe just a little. There, okay. And then we're gonna go in there to an eight inch loop, Greg. It'll go all the way down. Wait a second. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. Eight inch, eight inch, and then back to this 12 inch line for a loop. What? Yep. So right there. And if you try to bend it all at once, it'll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm starting to see stars, honestly. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Let me make sure that looks right. Right here? Nope. Yes. Yep. Just loop that around to there. Okay, uh, let's yeah, just keep them tight. There you go. Okay, let's get another one, boys. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, once you get in the rhythm, like it's good. But then all of a sudden your eyes go cross. Okay. All right, dude, so here's what we're doing here. We're basically going down, Greg. We're coming around here, all the way around out to that outside, and we're gonna do eight, 12, 12 back. Eight. And then, yep. we're gonna continue that with the stuff. And then that'll go all the way back up. All right, manifold number two. We got the first manifold all done. It was 12 loops. Now we're on the second manifold, which is the wood shop. Overcomers. Way makers. Way makers? Way makers. Wave makers? Way makers. Way makers. Yeah. You are what you eat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going down, down, down. Oh, sorry. We got to go oh, that gotta, way go, back. Yeah, we got to go back that way. I'm, You're yeah. right. The first I was time. right. The first, yeah. My bad, dude. I've been bad. staring at this white board for too long. Kyle, Kyle, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> I didn't want to have this weird spot, Joe. This is gonna be the one cold spot I'm gonna walk on my bare feet in my wood shop. 
and it's gonna be because I got laughed at for not just running it straight. Look at that. Get that staple out, buddy. Wait, 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 wait. Just catch, take her easy. Don't staple it yet. I gotta be able to cut it and stick it in there. I'm gonna staple this one. No, out. don't do it yet. No, this one's good. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Last tube. We gotta do a little bit of cleanup before the concrete's poured here. This is really bothering me, Greg. I know it bothers you too. Don't, don't let me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight because of I it. know. All right, cool. tubing ran. It wasn't hard, but it was time consuming. I would say we started sometime after lunch, three o'clock, I don't know, two and a half hours. It's like it's 1.30. Not, what's that? It's like one, a little before 1.30. Oh, so maybe only about hour and a half to two hours. So not bad, we followed the design. Everything worked out really good. Dude, only the dap. Awesome, thanks for your help, Joe. Did we do a good enough job? Beautiful. All right, that's all that matters. All right, we're done with the tube layout. Now, through this video, you heard us talk about eight inch on center, four inch on center, 12 inch on center. That's all based on the design, the engineering. And I think, I'm not an engineer, but I will say, whenever we ran those loops all the way out and around to the outsides, we kept them closer because there's gonna be more heat loss on the exterior. So, naturally, it makes sense. The closer you keep those tubes, there will be less loss in that area. And when we get to the interior, we then spaced out to the 12 inch on center because there's not gonna be much loss in the center of this slab, especially once it's heated up. So I got faith in Upanor. They did all the engineering and design on this. We're using the Upanor PEX tubing, which is specific for underground in radiant heat. And then we'll be having a bunch of work to be done at a later date, guys, when we hook up the boiler, the manifolds. I hope to get my buddy Eric from Mechanical Hub here. Overall, I know it's not in this video, but we did this heat sheet. It was awesome. It was great to use, and it was awesome to put this tubing in, not having to run staples everywhere. Take a look at this. This is actually something I wanted to show though before we wrap this up. Here you can kind of see, now that the mesh is on here, the mesh will get concrete and fully encapsulated underneath. All this tubing is down below because it's the, the mesh is sitting on these little knobs. So it's gonna protect the mesh, but also allow the concrete to get in and around all the mesh, hopefully ensuring a, a better floor than just pouring on top of the mesh and then you worry about it getting up and floating to the surface. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was quite easy to do. Now, it's gonna be the concrete pour. That's the next big thing and that's gonna be the next video. So definitely if that interests you, if you wanna see how this all comes together, hit that subscribe button. Maybe turn on that little bell so you get notified for the next video for the Dream Shop Build Series here at RRHQ 2.0. But with that, I'm gonna go help these guys get wrapped up so we can get done before it gets dark and we'll catch you on the next video.